All right, folks, welcome back to another GDE Office Hours recap. I'm hoping to kick off what I hope to be uh, the first of a handful of short form videos that are going to equip you in your uh, developer journey. This short form series is going to be based on user based logic within AppSheet. And before we get into it, I do want to share a little bit about what GDE Office Hours is. So GDE stands for Google Developer Experts. It is a program initiated by Google to gather expert developers and, and incentivize them to, uh, to better equip the community of developers, the general community of developers within uh, all of the various Google technologies. So spanning from uh, anything AI related to, uh, you know, uh, working within BigQuery or, or cloud functions, or, uh, you know, any of the technologies that exist within the Google cloud platform and Google workspace ecosystem. So my focus is actually within a technology called AppSheet. It's a no code solution, uh, owned by Google and it exists to enable what we would say, uh, what we would call citizen development. So people that are traditionally maybe in operations positions that can now develop applications and solve their own business use case with easy to use technology. So my area of expertise is AppSheet. It's to help you guys again in your development journey to uh, better equip you with every resource that I can to, uh, you know, improve your development experience, improve your efficiency of developing applications and better architecting your use cases. So I'd love for you to be a part of what we're doing here with the GDE office hours. It's a weekly virtual meeting held at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. And again, the purpose is to better equip you as a developer. So if you have questions about the platform or some of the other technologies you may be hoping to integrate with the platform, I'd love to connect with you in this time and better equip you. Uh, so walking through your use case and demoing uh, how I may you know, approach the same problem or walking through a screen share to uh, better uh, suit your needs. So let's go ahead and jump in to our recap this week. So last couple of weeks, we've actually talked about user-based logic. So first off, what even is it? Uh, secondly, in order to better accomplish our time in this video series, I wanted to create a, an example use case that I'd be going off of, and I'll be going through the steps I used to uh, create this application, why I did it the way that I did it, We'll hope to give some uh, some reinforcement to the architectural recommendations that I will be giving related to how you can accomplish some of these uh, different features or concepts within user-based logic. We'll talk about some of the more commonly used tables related to user-based logic. So that'll be the user settings table. It'll be a user, a user table and a user variables table. So we'll get into what those three things are, when do you use them, what are some of the benefits and drawbacks to each one? Finally, we will uh, define app logic based on user variables. So this is going to be, you know, creating a user variables table. We're going to automate the creation of those records just so that you can see how to do it. Uh, we will automate the setting of variable values. We're then going to take those user variables and we're going to use them in a custom dashboard that we'll create. And we're also going to walk through uh, the very basics of how to create a dynamic dashboard, which we'll get into what that is as well. And then finally, we're going to be creating uh, some custom user experiences on these variables outside of the dashboard. So creating what I would call a sequenced uh, view flow. And that will conclude our series.